These are Nikita gift. Nikita's gift. These are Seijo. When it comes to dehydrating, the Seijo went out on the Nikita's gift. Because the Nikita's gift being a hybrid of a blend of American persimmons and Japanese, it still has seeds. And so trying to cut them for the dehydrator <laughs> can be difficult and a pain. Here's a mixture here. This is a Seijo with no seeds and it's very easy to slice into slivers and to be placed on the dehydrating plate. Whereas these, I had to dig out the seeds really to make for a better product. And cutting through them was a pain. Not a terrible inconvenience, but an inconvenience. But they're absolutely delectable. They're delicious. Both varieties are delicious, fresh or dehydrated. This is a nine tray dehydrator that I have. It takes about 16 hours to do this right at about 135 degrees. And I'll be doing this for a week straight or more. I put these in last night. Let's see. I try not to fill the trays too much because they dry better if you don't overfill the trays. But let me tell you, these are absolutely Absolutely delicious. Mm. 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 So flavorful. Let's take a little walk. You'll see why. Well, the wind has blown down my ladder. <laughs> It's been cold and it's been windy, but here you will see why it will take me a week to get these all dehydrated. And I've been eating these since September. These trees are extremely prolific. That's a Seijo right there. And you can see, I've taken so many persimmons off of this tree, and yet there's, there are still so many more. And they're all ready to be eaten, and all ready to be dehydrated as well. Let's see here. I'll take, a, take one of these off here for you. Oh, wow. There we go. Let's see. Let's take a bite out of this. I don't, I'm not getting much sunlight. Wow, windy. There's another Seijo tree, just loaded with fruit. Completely loaded. And as I've said several times, I it's not like I haven't been eating these as fast as I can. I've been giving some to my friends and relatives. Let's take a bite of this one. Let's see. I don't know if the sunlight's very good. I've got to start wrapping my fig soon. And I will. 
some of them I'll dig out of the ground. Some of them I won't. Let's take a bite of this. Mmm. Mmm. They are exquisite. Mmm. This one I won't be digging up. This is a Ron de Bordeaux. I have several in the ground. Two, two in the ground here and one in Virginia. And this one is, this is Red Lebanese Becca Valley. And I'm, I'm going to dig this one up rather than wrap it. This one's a little larger, and I'm going to wrap it and place a, a 40 watt bulb in there for the winter, which I will control from the house. I have a switch that controls all of the fig trees that I wrap. Most of these I'm going to wrap and place lights in them. The ones along the house here, I'll do the same. Same with this Celeste, which will bear a ton of fruit next year. I'm, I'm not going to chop it this year. You can see where I cut it back harshly last year. Now without the leaves, I tried to demonstrate this before, but it's more difficult when it's fully leaved out. But you can see the cut marks here where I last year cut it back, all the way back to four foot tall, four and a half foot. As I was stating before, I, I have to do that every third year just to control the, the growth or else I can't, I can't cover it. It just goes up to the top of that. <laughs> it goes so high. But this year I'll just pull this all together with a rope and wrap it with burlap put a tarp over it and I'll put a, a 60 watt light bulb in it. You'd be surprised what that 60 watt light bulb will do at nighttime when it goes down to 10 degrees or 8 degrees. It's 10 degrees warmer in there and that makes the difference. And I won't get any dieback. And some people say, well, oh, that's dangerous. No, it's not. <laughs> I've been doing it for years and years and years. If you do it right and it's waterproof, it's not dangerous. Some people take a chance and they don't wrap or they wrap just with burlap and or other materials and you've got to be extremely careful because at night when the temperature goes down to five degrees, it's gonna be five degrees in there. Trust me when I tell you. And it's gonna it's gonna do damage. With a mild winter, you can get away with it sometimes. But it's rare that you get away with it. And this is a matter of degree as to how much damage you're going to actually get in the spring when, or discover in the spring. I prefer, after doing all the work, all the expense, and watering and pruning and fertilizing, I prefer to, to protect my fig trees even though I admit it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But I'll tell you, the results, well, you can see the results. The results are good. Because you've got to have some wood left over from the prior year. If you want to have a good crop and an early crop. If it dies down to the ground, it'll send up shoots like these shoots here. I think trees are always setting up sending up shoots but those shoots by the time they mature in September and if you get a few figs in October uh, the nights are cold it's rainy it's you don't get the sunlight at that time of the year and the fig quality is far 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 less it's inferior to anything that you will ripen in July or August and that's why it's crucial 
in my opinion, to have leftover last year's wood because you're going to get an earlier crop and that earlier crop is going to produce superior tasting figs and more figs and for a longer period of time. Getting back to this, oh, wow, another bite. Mm. I've eaten so many of these. Probably, without exaggeration, a hundred at least. Just me. No question. I've picked a lot of these persimmons. And now I've got to get up on the ladder and of course a lot of them I don't have to reach. I can get on just a little step ladder or just reach up and get them. But a lot of them I've got to get up on a ladder pretty high to pick them. And some I've got to get the picker out. This stick here I use with a wire on the end. And I'll reach up in the tree from the ladder and put it up there and twist it. And turn it and break them off. The ones that are too high for me to reach on the ladder. I've picked a lot of these persimmons. But there's still a lot of work to do. But it's worth it because the dehydrated persimmons, I'll put them in the freezer. Some I'll keep out fresh, some I'll put in the refrigerator. And they're last a real long time, you know, over the winter. So when you're craving, when you're craving fruit <laughs> and there's no fruit around, Believe me, those dehydrated slices of persimmons are absolutely delicious and are a wonderful treat. Here's my, here's my friend here. It helps me with the birds, but I haven't had any trouble, as you can see. Not much trouble with the birds. A little here and there. It's getting really cold. And now I'm going to dig up a few more trees. Here's the here's what's left of my Nikita's gift that I just showed you in the house. I've been eating these a lot of them. I've got another tree further away there. And I've eaten quite a few. They are absolutely superb. Here it looked like something got to this one. That's edible right now, perfectly ripe. But I picked a lot of these to be dehydrated and I've been eating them and they're one of my absolute favorites. And my friends and my mother, people just love them. Can't grow enough really. This is my sultane, which I'm going to dig up right now. What I'm going to do, I should have gotten my little machete out for this video. But I've got a flat nose machete that I that I put all the way around and I hammer it down. To cut the roots because there were holes in this grow bag that I left. I put holes all the way around this grow bag about three inches from the base of the grow bag. And this has been growing in the ground since late April. It produced a ton of figs, a lot of figs. And now rather than to wrap this tree which is quite a bit of work. Because it's in a grow bag and I've been experimenting with this and it works out, it's perfect. Because it's in a grow bag, I'll just cut off the roots, hammer down all the way around this grow bag and then grab the handles 
and just pop it right up. I've done it many times. And I'll put this right in my root cellar or take it to the isolation room. This one's destined for the root cellar. Let's take a walk. I wasn't even going to really make this video. These two trees growing side by side, I'm going to probably wrap them because they are Mount Etna types, very, very tough and hardy. They're fully in the ground and I may dig them up and put them in the root cellar or I may just wrap them. They come out this way. I want to show you some more fig trees out here. I've still got quite a bit of work to do. I don't know what the date is today. Middle of November or later. But I've got some pretty good varieties here that I'm going to dig. They're also in grow bags, as you can see. And so I'm going to dig them out. Here's one I already dug out a couple days ago. And this one needs to, go, needs to be dug out. It's also in a grow bag. As you can see, it's a good alternative way to control smaller trees and to put them in protection. It really works very, very well, and I certainly recommend it. I, I've gotten a lot of figs off these trees. Plant the full grow bag the whole thing in the ground in the spring put holes in the grow bag so that the roots can come out the roots spread into the natural earth and the quality of the figs is far superior to just growing them in a container most figs that are grown in the ground are much much better in taste than figs that are grown in containers. There's no question about that, period. And this is a compromising method. It's a compromise. You can put them in the ground, get the superior taste, and dig them up easily and put them in winter storage and not have to wrap them all, especially when they're this size. Here's something that's interesting. Now this is a San Pedro type fig, and I wanna show you. You can see the Breba, if you can look closely. There's plenty of Breba on here. Hey, a spider, look at that. As cold as it's been, it's been down in the low 20s. Look at that spider. How about that? Hmm. It's interesting, it's freezing right now. It's so cold, unseasonably cold. But you can see the Breba here. This is a San Pedro type, which means that it will make figs. Figs will mature on this wood, mature wood, next year it will be on last year's wood, in other words. And many varieties only produce on new wood. Some varieties produce on new wood and also have some Breba, but not many. This, this is a San Pedro type. We will not have a main crop fig that will mature or fall off. They need caprification from the fig wasp which we don't have here, of course. So the second crop, or the main crop, will completely fall off. But the first figs, the Breba, on a San Pedro type, and you can see, there they are, they've already formulated. They will mature, and this will be loaded with figs. Like it was this year, believe it or not. This little tree produced a lot. I have large figs of this, large trees, rather, of this. Uh, both in containers and in the ground. Now these Breba, if left unwrapped, of course they'll all be lost, which is another reason why we want to wrap our figs, because we don't want to lose our Breba, because they're the earliest figs and they're delicious on certain varieties, very delicious. This particular one, Desert King, Dessert King is the proper pronunciation of that, because it's a 
the king of desserts is what it really means. Not many, many people realize that. But Dessert King uh, is a, just one of the very best of the San Pedro type varieties. And the figs are exquisite. They're delicious. And they're early, right around the 4th of July, a little before. And we're all eagerly anticipating our first crop of figs. And that's why it's so valuable to wrap your figs or dig them up like this. I'm going to take that machete and go all the way around, hammer it down, and I'm going to pull that right out. And I'm going to put this in the isolation room. You can put it in your garage or wherever you store your figs. And you're finished with it. And next year you put it back in the ground. And until these trees get four or five foot tall, this is a very easy process. And because it's easy, I do it. <laughs> I, you know, it, it makes sense to take the path of least resistance. It certainly does. Some trees I have to wrap and I wrap them. Certainly the larger ones too. And I do have my work cut out. Here's some more that are in grow bags. This is another San Pedro type, which was taken from, by my uncle in, from Italy. And you can see that there's plenty of abrebo on that too. And it's in a grow bag and I'm going to lift it out today. See it's all finished with this video. This one I'm going to wrap, I think, or I may just dig it up. It's not in a grow bag. Some of these I've already dug out. You can see the holes in the ground. And others I haven't gotten to yet. I've dug these out. Quite a few of them. Here's my root cellar. I might as well just... Again, I wasn't really going to do this, but just to give you an idea of what it's like. I've got a friend coming tomorrow. And we're going to meet with him and got some figs I want to give him some trees but here you can see what the root cellar looks like uh, these boards on the top pop right out they're not permanently installed and I'll pop them out with a hammer and then that I lay more figs in there and you'd be surprised how many fig trees I can lay in there. Some again, I'll just dig them right out and some or will be in grow bags like that. You can see how the roots have grown out of these pots and grow bags. You can see that and they will be fine here all winter. I'll just put a tarp over this, over my root cellar, or fig cellar, and see where the roots came out there? You can see that, and I just cut them off with the machete by hammering it straight down. It's a flat nose machete. I'll show it, maybe if I can, maybe in another video, but it's an easy process. It's one that I highly recommend. It saves a lot of work from wrapping. And in the spring, I'll just cut these pots off and either put them in containers or put them right in the ground again. Probably in larger grow bags or maybe in the ground, period, depending. I'm going to bring some to Virginia where I don't have to wrap figs at all. But I've got more to do. And these trees are going in there too. And they're just stacked one on top of the other and I'll squeeze them all in and when I've squeezed it, another advantage of the root cellar is because it's so moist the moisture is always in the 90 percentile you can see the water see the water see the moisture along the wall because it's so moist you do not have to water the trees all winter long I'll repeat that you do not have to water the trees all winter long you put the tarp over it and it's good night until spring and it will not freeze in the root cellar no matter how cold it's gotten down to zero I've opened up this and there was nothing frozen at all never gets below 32 so it's a it's a perfect environment and it was some work I had a friend with a black hoe that dug it out and I, I built it myself 
like I do everything. And it's just worked out wonderful. The last few years have been just very convenient. Because I can pop a tree out and just throw it in there. And then, just see the moisture? Look at the moisture on the inside of that wood. Okay. There's plenty of moisture. Not, not too much moisture where it will cause root rot. And it's not too dry where it will kill your trees. It's just a perfect environment where you leave your trees there all winter long. For those of you that live in the northeast, see the holes? That's how you do the, the grow bags. You just put a hole here, here, there, little holes, and the roots will come through, as you can see, and just chop them off. Next year, these trees will be perfectly healthy and ready to go in the ground or in larger pots. And that will be the end of that. So, I hope that information is useful to you if you live in the Northeast and you want to protect your figs. Again, I wrap a lot of my figs, which I will show in another video. I'm going to start wrapping soon because I have to. It's getting late in the year and it's getting cold. Whew, I'm cold. <laughs> I'm freezing. But you don't have to wrap every tree. And I've just shown you a technique that you can utilize that will protect your fig trees, give you plenty of fruit that tastes just as good as any other tree that's growing in the ground. The other nice, wonderful thing about in the grow bag technique that I use is that you can let them stay in the root cellar a little while in the spring and they're they're butt out really nicely without being caught in the late frosts and that's important because they're getting a little head start believe it or not they're getting a head start because the root cellar is warmer than the surrounding environment above the ground so you're going to get an early start so that when you do put them take them out of the root cellar and when you do put them in the ground There'll be already a few weeks ahead of any tree that maybe you would have left in the ground, even if you wrapped it. Now another thing too, when I when I wrap trees, and I'll show this later, but and I'll do spring spring videos as well. But these are some of my baby figs that I'm wrapping here. I'm going to be digging them up and putting them in the root cellar too, because these are precious varieties. But anyway, another thing, when you unwrap a tree in the spring. It's a trick. You can partially unwrap it and keep it open a little bit in your tarp so that it doesn't get too hot because heat kills your figs even more than or as much as your as the cold. And I'll explain that more. But you have to wrap your figs in a certain way where the heat doesn't accumulate on those hot days where the sun's beating down. You can bring your trees out of dormancy a few days of that or a week and then all of a sudden a cold snap comes back and they're going to die right in the containers, right right in the, the wrappings. And a lot of people don't understand that. There's methods that you have to use. You have to learn how to regulate the temperature when you wrap figs and have to wrap them in certain ways. But in the spring, you can partially unwrap them, which you should do, so that they don't overheat because that will kill them for sure. It will cook them also. Not just bring them out of dormancy in the middle of the winter and kill them, but it will kill them in the spring or even during warm periods in the winter if it gets too hot with that sun beating down on the tarp. So I always cover my outside layers of tarp. I always cover the outside with, with burlap to keep the heat from building up too much on the tarps. But what I'm saying here is that you can partially unwrap them in the spring and use the tarps sort of like a a greenhouse effect you keep them just right you keep them warmer than the outside temperature okay keep them warmer than the outside temperature but not too warm to where you kill them and you're going to get a two or three week lead on the season two or three weeks in the Northeast is crucial if you want early figs if you look at some of my other videos you'll see you'll see quite a few figs on my trees very early in the year and I talk about the methods that I used to accomplish that goal. 
littering them with warm water that I warm overnight in the house in five gallon buckets or in the greenhouse. I never water my trees in the morning when the water's cold. I might put my containers in the greenhouse and let the water warm up all day and then water my trees in the spring. All of that is extremely important in getting your figs to produce early in the season. And part of that is if you unwrap them, you can partially unwrap them in the spring and use the, all of the materials you have there as a kind of greenhouse effect. And because you can do that and then cover them a little bit at night, if it's really gonna get cold, you cover them more. And if you do that, your trees are going to get a two, three week head start over an ordinary tree in the ground, which probably would be dead anyway, or there'd be dieback all the way to the ground most of our winters in most cases. Here's some rosemary growing beautifully in the greenhouse. It's wrapping up the season here, putting all the trees away. I've moved all my large trees, a lot of my trees, into my isolation room, which my son built for me in the basement, which I'll probably make a video about that in the future, too. Yep, the season's winding down. Time for me to drain these barrels and dig up the remainder of my trees, get them wrapped. get my fruit dehydrated now I'll be busy for a week maybe longer but I'll get it all done here's some more Nikita's gift There's a marvelous persimmons that I've shown on previous videos and I just I just love this tree I love this variety and the sejo I've got to pick these and they're ready for the dehydrator as well. Oh, some, some goji berries still left over. Look at that. 